Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through how to understand our market diagram when we have a monopoly and we also have a positive consumption externality. And as part of the discussion, I'm going to go through deadweight loss. So on the diagram that I have here on the screen, I just have a standard monopoly outcome. So the monopolist here produces Q star units and sells each unit for P star. What's important to know about this diagram is that the curves here that track either our costs of production, that's our marginal cost, MC, or our benefits of consumption, that's tracked by our demand curve or our marginal benefit curve. Well, these curves only cover what we call the private costs of production and private benefits of consumption. So our marginal cost curve tracks the private costs incurred by the producer and the marginal benefit curve tracks how much benefit the consumer gets because of consuming a good. An external cost or benefit, in contrast to a private cost or benefit, is incurred to a third party, so neither the producer or the consumer. And just to make it clear that the curves that I have here only track the private costs and benefits, I'm just going to add in on the diagram that marginal cost is marginal private cost, so MPC, and marginal benefit is marginal private benefit, so MPB. Now, when we have a positive externality in consumption, it's the consumption of a good that gives a benefit to a third party. So perhaps, for instance, I take a bus trip and in consuming that bus trip, I don't use my car. So there's less pollution and less congestion for others. Now, the benefit to others because I consumed that bus trip, that's the externality. Now, externalities are captured in what we call our marginal social benefit and marginal social cost functions. So our marginal social benefit function will track the total benefit from consumption for each unit consumed. So that's the benefit to the consumer. That's our private our marginal private benefit. Like we said before, that's tracked by demand plus any other externalities from consumption. Our marginal social cost function will track the total cost associated with the production of a good. So not just the cost afforded to the producer, that's our marginal private cost, but also any externalities from production. Now our positive consumption externality will be part of our marginal social benefit function because it's a consumption externality. Because it's positive, there's a positive benefit afforded to a third party, well, that means that visually uh, our marginal social benefit curve will lie above our demand curve like this, like that green line there. So there is additional benefit for every quantity consumed. So we can take any marginal unit, say Q prime, we read up the private benefit afforded to the consumer for consuming that Q prime unit is, well, the level from our demand. The marginal social benefit, we read off our marginal social benefit curve. The gap between those two levels, that's going to be the value of the external benefit associated with the consumption of Q prime. And so that's how we incorporate our externalities into our market diagrams. Now, the most common thing that we do with these diagrams is we think about market failure, so any deadweight loss. And usually we say that a market is efficient when we produce where our marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. And that makes sure that we've exhausted all of the units of production where benefits are higher than costs and we haven't produced where costs are higher, are higher than benefits. When we have any externalities, we want this equality to be our social curves. So where our marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost. And this level of production is what I'm going to call the social optimum. When we think about deadweight loss associated with a monopoly, when there's externalities, we're going to think about deviations from where our marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost as problematic. So levels of production that don't meet this equality. Now, when we have an externality in consumption, we're going to assume typically that there is no externality in production. And this means that our marginal private cost function is equal to our marginal social cost function. And the marginal private cost curve is then equal to our marginal social cost curve. 
And so we find our social optimum then where our marginal social benefit curve is equal to marginal social cost, which is actually just our regular marginal private cost or our marginal cost function. And so on our diagram, that's Q optimum there. Now, since our monopoly produces Q star units, which is less than Q optimum, there is going to be deadweight loss. And the area that we're looking for is just here in red. And the reason why this area is deadweight loss is because from Q star to Q optimum, the marginal social benefit of consumption, that's, that's our marginal social benefit curve, is greater than our marginal social cost of production, but we haven't produced. So the monopolists have underproduced relative to the social optimum. And so that's our deadweight loss. And that's our diagram with a monopoly with a positive consumption externality. I hope that the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are keeping safe, safe and well.